Welcome, everyone, to another episode of 12 Million. Uh, I am your host, uh, Darren Jenkins, with my co-host, Akbar Majeev. What's going on, Akbar? What's good, Darren? What's good? How you doing today? I'm doing good. Happy Oscar Day. This is uh, Oscars. <laughs> so for this is actually an appropriate conversation to have on the on the, which is I think the Oscars are just about to start. Um, we are joined by a, a gentleman who I discovered on um, Clubhouse. My my new addiction. Um, he is a film composer. Uh, I'm going to read his, his bio real quick. Uh, Kulanen is a film composer and sound designer that has worked on radio dramas, sh short films, animation, and commercials for organizations including BBC Media Action, The Guardian, Lion TV, among others. He is also a composer of the Netflix original crime drama, Olo Turi. Welcome to the show, sir. I, I, coming all the way from Nigeria, man. So that is dope. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so how are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well. Okay. Doing very good. good. Looking forward to a positive conversation. Definitely. So where in Nigeria are you are are you now? And then are, where are you from? So I believe you're from like the north central states um, mm -hmm. originally, but kind of where exactly? Um so um <laughs> Right now, I am in the capital city of Nigeria, Abuja. But originally, I am from Benue State. It's in North Central in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, as as my co-host Darren mentioned, that you are a um, film composer, award-winning composer. Yes. Let's let's be clear, award-winning <laughs> composer. But I do have a question. I have, I have a very serious question. So I understand that you went to the University of Los and you received a bachelor's of physics. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> the bachelor's of physics. So how did you get from there to yeah. becoming a world winning composer? Like, like how did that happen? Okay. Um, I mean, the story is, is funny because as I was leaving secondary school, I know I always wanted to do music. I wanted to do, I wanted to do music, but I grew up in a small town in the north of Nigeria. Um, it's a small town called Wubi. And I, we didn't have much, you know, and so I couldn't go to school very far away from my city or from where, where we live. And so I, I was looking for, a university that could offer something close to engineering or engineering, you know, sound engineering or something close to music that I could do because I just couldn't tell my family that I wanted to do music. It's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they don't wouldn't worry. have taken the same, the same way. So, exactly. So I wanted to do something close to engineering, but this university did not offer engineering. And mm. so the closest thing to engineering was physics. You wow. Know. wow. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and, so uh, and I wanted to go to this city again because there was a famous Nigerian um, music producer who lived there. And I just wanted to meet him. Mm. His name is Dr. Fanan Persipol. Mm. And so I chose this university and I chose physics because physics was maybe kind of close to engineering and my parents would not be too, you know, you're doing music. And so <laughs> physics, again, this city, this university of just because I wanted to meet this, um, this uh, music producer, Dr. Panam Pesipol, you know, and so that's what took me to physics. And that's what took me to the University of Joss. It was actually because I, so Joss is a, is a town that is known for breeding musical talent in Nigeria. Oh, okay. oh, wow. Lots of, okay. yes, lots of the famous musicians, even though they end up living to Lagos, which is the commercial capital where music and entertainment really thrives, 
mm. a, a lot of musicians come up from that small city just you know so i went there just so that i could have the experience myself you know and because i wanted to meet this um, famous <laughs> music producer dr panam kasipo yeah so that's what took me to physics but i mean if you look at it um physics is actually music is actually physics you know it's waves it's vibrations it's frequency right. it's, uh, and all of that you know so um, it's a very sophisticated not... version of, of <laughs> yeah. the, <I> mean, <laughs> of, you know yeah, it's, not, yeah. it's not too far from from um from that you know frequencies right. waves propagating them sound vibrations yeah <laughs> i mean you must be the most overqualified sound engineer there is on the planet because <laughs> you know seriously um so if you're doing uh so you're in school doing physics how did you how did you make the how did you make the transition into actually being in music like how did you you know where how did you start to learn the skill sets and the, the software and all these different things that needed to be done. Um, um, like what was the transition? So, um, when I, when I get to school, I start attending this church and, uh, they have a studio or they are trying to build a studio, mm. you know, and I saw this as my opportunity to get to learn. So um, I became a very committed member so that mm -hmm. I could get access. It's, they started with, they had a four track Tascam machine, mm -hmm. you know, and I made sure I was so committed that I, I had the keys to, I was the one, I wasn't in charge of the studio, but I was the one who would um, open and lock it up. You know, I was like the guy who goes to open it up and lock it up when everything is done. So I was in school, but I was super also involved in this studio. Mm -hmm. You know, they started with a small track, a four track Tasker machine, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I'd open the studio in the morning, I'd go to school and then sometimes at night I'll come and spend all night with this task machine, just trying to experiment, try to record, you know, the concept of um, multi-tracking was just a wonder to me, you know, mm. so I would layer my voice, layer my voice and try just experimenting all sorts, you know, and the studio grew a bit bigger. They switched to computers, you know, and then there was a cakewalk, I believe, Mm. And there was um, Cool Edit Pro. That was what it was called then. Uh -oh. It's now called Audition. But it was Cool Edit Pro. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So we had that in the studio. And I would always just go to watch um, the guys work. Uh, and then also, there was a... There's a, In that same city, there is a film school. It's called the National Film Institute. And they were they were not so equipped, you know. And so they would come to the studio, this, this this studio that belonged to the church, to do their assignments and to try and do things. So this is where I started meeting filmmakers. And then my 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 the, the concept of music and film, you know, just started coming together for me because they would make their films for their school project and they would need music. And they would not be able to afford um, the guy in the studio. And so they would ask me, mm. you know, can I just do something for them, you know, for their film, you know. And so it just started little by little by little by little. Mm. And one of the things I want to say is that the director of Oloturi is actually one of the guys I met back then. Oh, so I've, yeah. I've, I've known him for almost over 15 years, you know, mm. going to 20. So I knew him back then. He was one of the people I met, you know, in that studio. And so he, you know, as the relationship grew, I kept working on film. He kept doing films too. He became a really big director. And when this film came up, he asked me to write the music for it. So that's how it is. It's been 
gradual step by step process for me. You know, so yes. throughout my days in university, um, it was where I, it, it was you know working in that studio that I built my skills. So another thing that happened to me was, or another thing that I did was, mm. in university, there's what is called industrial training. Okay. So um, at some point, you take off time to go and do real practical job. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of the things that happens in Nigeria. So my pay for that period, that three month period where you go to do a practical job, you know, I used it to buy a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes. So I used that to buy a computer I had in my room and then I got, you know, software to install. And then I started really trying stuff for myself, you know, mm -hmm. I would see things and then I'll try to do stuff myself. You know, so that's pretty much it. I I was I, um I mainly self taught, you know. Oh, okay. Until yes, until after I point, I decided to I did a short course with um Christopher Young. You know, mm -hmm. I went to yes, he does this summer thing in in Bulgaria every year. You know that I I went you know, and that it was after that that I did I started doing I did Lion Hearts, the first mm -hmm. Netflix original, and then okay. the tour, yeah. <laughs> wow. so, yeah. So you were self-taught for the most yeah. part, right? But very yeah. determined, I see. Very determined, right? So yeah. you were streamlined, <laughs> focused on on becoming a, a a film composer, or was it more so? So film composing was your ultimate goal. So, so um, it started with becoming a music producer. Ah, uh, okay. You mm. know, so mm. I was songwriting. And, and yes, I was learning music production, but then my interaction with those students, you know, mm -hmm. because I also love storytelling, okay. you know, so my interaction with them just opened my, the world of film music to me, you know, and I saw that it was something that was really lacking. So here in Nigeria, for the most part, you have people who write songs, you know, and then they just place it in films. Right. But nobody was really scoring to picture like that, right. you know. And so I saw that this was something that we needed to incorporate in our, in, our, in our industry. You know, even though it was emerging and many people did not see the need for a score composer, you know. But I saw the need and it's something right. I wanted to, yes. So I just keyed into it. Yeah, so initially it was to become a music producer, but mm. then... I, I found out that I, I loved film and I loved film music and I loved storytelling. And then my interaction with these film students just it just morphed into becoming a film composer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I know we so I know we talked about um, how you got you know like where you started learning the skill set but i guess my question also becomes like at what age did you decide this was this was what i wanted to do you know like music was because i know like our, it's the same here trust me like if if you are going to college um, like my father did not want me to be a filmmaker he was like if you want to go to school and you want to do something that's related to like arts it has to have business, it has to have math, it has to have some kind of... So I had to take advertising, which, you know, it, it was what it was. Um, and so, but I didn't really realize, to be honest, I didn't really realize I wanted to be in film until I got out of school. Like, I didn't even, like, I didn't even go in... I, the only media classes i took in college were i think i took television production probably and i didn't take any film so as a kid as a kid i wanted to be in the music i wanted to be a i wanted to be a thing you know what i mean so i, I always ask guests like at what age did you decide that you know what your career what you wanted to do and even though your parents probably wanted you to go here, your mind was still here. So, um, 
I know that at seven, I've, I've always loved music. Wow. You know, when I was in junior secondary, um, mm. that's about age, say 15, 16. Mm. My friends always told me, I, I can't, I, I don't remember, but my friends told me that I would say to them, I'm going to become a music producer and I'll be good at it. I don't remember telling them. But when I actually realized and consciously said that I was going to do film music, I, I probably was in university too, like, mm. like in college too. Like you say, you know, I was in university probably around my third year. It's four years. So probably around my third year, I said I was going to focus on film music. Mm. You know, and yeah, probably was around there, my third year, yeah. Was there any, like, um, so who were the people that you were looking up to as far as trying to, you know, emulate early in your career? So, um, I'll answer that, but uh, I was, because you asked for age, I was probably around um, 20, 21 when I made this, okay. when I made this decision, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, what about yeah. the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same, I think. So, so, who was I looking up to? Um, I mean, there were no, there were no score composers in Nigeria that I could look up to. Mm -hmm. But um, again, this Doctor Panam Persipol, I kept trying to just meet him, you know, and just. Did you meet him? I never did. That's the funny <laughs> thing. <laughs> I never did. Actually, that that three months of industrial training. I actually went to his studio to apply to work okay. there, you know, but they didn't take me. You know, I just wanted to <laughs> watch him work or do I never I never got to meet him. That's the sad part. All my my stay in I mean I I, I went to concerts that he performed, but right. I never got to yes, meet him. Uh, he inspired you enough to get you on your path. So yes. <laughs> that was the work he was supposed to do. Yes, yes. So um, I, I really looked up to him then. But um, I I probably was uh, listening a lot to films from the U.S. Mm. And so um, I would say I, I was listening to, I mean, because of Lion King and Zimmer, uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hans was a lot, lot, lot. Um, he was very influential. You know, mm. To, I mean, he was one of the most famous. And then because of right. Lion King, um, he, he made a he made an impression. You know, um, the Lion King film. Um, right. And then, uh, um, who else? Let me see who else. So I wouldn't say I knew the names, of, but there are films, particular films right. that I watched, mm -hmm. like The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Made... <laughs> Ennio Maricone. <laughs> yes, Ennio Maricone. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was later I knew it was Ennio Maricone, and then I started trying to follow his work. You know, yeah. but then um, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, the movie, you know, I would listen to it over back then when I watched it. Um, there was a TV show. It was called Police Academy. Academy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know who the composer is, but I remember yeah. the score. Mm -hmm. bam, bam, ba -da, bam, bam, bam. Oh, yeah. I don't know the score. Bam, 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 so, um, mm. Police Academy, it was a kind of a comedy. It yeah. really made an impression, yes. You know, um, it was as I started to grow, I started to look at the credit, you know, mm. to see who the composer was, but who the composer was. But back then, those were some of the shows that made an impression to me, mm. score wise. You know. yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, it was actually um, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I remember actually mm -hmm. getting the Star Wars album. Right, and it was like right. it was nothing but compose, no words. It was just I think John Williams, John was, Williams the, yeah. was the the composer of that one. But I remember that right. It's kind of like I play it over and over and over again. Right. Well, uh, yeah, everybody. Yeah, John everybody. Williams. Everybody. John Williams too, because of Home Alone. You know, the first <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. The John Williams alone. ruled the 80s. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. The festival alone made an impression. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. So what was your first film? So was it an independent? How did, how did that come about? How did the very first, your first film come about? So um, I started working on documentaries a lot first um, because I live in the, I, I decided to settle in the capital city, even, even though most of my work comes from Lagos. Mm. Um, but because it's the capital city, like maybe DC, so there's a lot of corporate videos, mm. you know, documentaries. There's a lot of uh, so so I, I decided to settle here. So that's what I started with. You know, I started writing for documentaries for yeah for short films. There was a company here that used to do three short films every year, and they would hire me to do at least one. You know, mm. So I started doing for short films, for documentaries, some commercials. Um, but not big ones. Um, and then um, BBC, somehow, somebody who knew me, okay, again, these guys that I knew from that film school. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I always tell people it's always a, about building relationships. The people right. I knew at that film school mm. got hired to BBC. Mm. You know, And so they were needing a composer you know, sound designer for different things that, we, that they were doing. They were doing some TV stuff. They were doing radio dramas. And so, like, for one of the radio dramas, they would hire, they, 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 they got me on board, you know. So, mm. I, it's, so it's, it, it's been a gradual process. There, I started to build, build. But my first film was in, first feature film was in 2014. Mm. Um, a film called October 1. So, again, a cinematographer I met in that film school was shooting this film and he recommended me to the director. Oh, and then no, the director what? said, come on, I mean, uh, let's try him. And so he called me. I went to his hotel room. He asked me a few questions. I answered. And somehow, I don't know why he just trusted me, even though I'd never done a, a future film. He said, okay, you will do my film. You know, And mm. that film went on to be one of the biggest films in Nigeria. It, it actually, it actually um, changed the Nigerian film industry. You know, people began to pay closer attention to sound design and music after that film came out. You know, so it was, a, it was an industry-defining film. October 1, that's what it's called. <laughs> so it was a science fiction kind of psycho thriller, right? Yep. It, yeah, yeah, yes. It was a, right. yes, yes. <laughs> Is there is there a particular genre you prefer, or I mean, or you like in particular a genre film, or? Um, so right now, I just get, I just do what I get, you know. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, right, yeah, right. exactly, because our industry is emerging. Right. There's a lot of comedy that is being shot here, but there are certain people. But I love drama. Okay. You know, I like character based, driven films. You know, I I, I like to write music to a character and see him metamorphosize or go through all the stages in the film, you know, and try to write um, a score that would go through with him, you know, that would reflect that character through right. all of his stages to the film. So I, I, I like drama, you know, I like character based films, you know, mm-hmm. because I want to tell the story, you know, of what is there a, uh, um, is there a, a show or movie or a project that is that you would you go I oh I wish I could have done that or I wish I could have done that one? Because uh, <laughs> um, um, I know I I got tons of them. <laughs> <laughs> so. So there are films that I, I I listen to the score and I say and I say, man, this person, yeah, definitely. There are films <laughs> that I've seen that. <laughs> um, one of the, the uh, Jerry Goldsmith, hmm. the score for 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 um, 
the, the movie with Sharon Stone. I'm trying to remember the name. Basic oh, Instinct. Basic Instinct. Basic Instinct. That, that right. score is... <laughs> and it's, it's a few notes, but then it repeats itself throughout and throughout and throughout and throughout. And it just sticks in your head. And mm. I said, this is something <laughs> I should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Basic Instinct. Jerry Goldsmith is... is <laughs> Basic instinct. Um, um, which other film? I wish I was the one. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I just um, did another podcast today, mm-hmm. and the movie the movie we talked about was the, the Matrix, oh. and the you know the. It's it's soundtrack and it's score uh-huh. is so amazing. Uh-huh. That's so a which movie. one? So um, every Wednesday, I'm 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 in a clubhouse meeting with um, the leader of G- Juno Reactor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a clubhouse that. Oh really? A clubhouse for composers. Yes, that I'm always. Oh, wow. He's he's always in that meeting. He did the score for the Matrix two and three. Oh really? Uh, yeah yeah. Um, Oh, Juno I mean, Reactor. in there because <laughs> we're going we're to do two and three at some point. So we'd love to have, have that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, the- there's a clubhouse group, um, Scorefest. Mm-hmm. We meet uh, every Wednesday, you know. Um, oh, okay. I, I'll tell you the time, but he's always there, you know. So, yeah, ma- the metrics, wow. the, the merging of synthesizers with uh, uh, orchestral elements was yeah oh, was out of this world yeah you know it 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 brought a new i mean synthesizers with the orchestra it was mm. just it, it, it was a different sound so yeah, yeah the matrix is one of those scores that mm. just stood out <laughs> yeah so what's the all right, so what's the general process of i guess the composer and the director kind of working together. I mean, I, I know it's like you said in, in Nigeria, it's, it's somewhat of a new industry that, that you're pioneering. It's emerging. Yes. It's emerging, right? And you're one of the, the pioneers. So do they kind of just give it to you and just let you kind of have complete autonomy or how's that process work? So, um, so yes, in Nigeria, most, because um, the honest truth is most of many of the directors don't even know how the process, you know, especially with music, is supposed to be done. Right. You know, but I try to let them know. I try to, I try to let it be their own creative, uh, um, to make their creative decisions, you know, then allow mm. me to do my thing. But a lot of them just give it to me, mm. you know. I spot it by myself, you know, and I write the music and then I send to them for review. Sometimes they say, no, this part doesn't need music. This part doesn't music, need music. Um, a few of them, I actually sit with them and we have a spotting session and we say, okay, we want music here, 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 here and there. Mm-hmm. But um, a number of them just give it to me and say, look, I don't know what to do <laughs> when it comes to music. You tell me what should I do, and then we mm. go like, okay, I think this place needs to have this. This place needs to have this, and this would be a score, and this would be some soundtrack if you can get a song that you know. And I do all of that, you know. Mm. So it's it depends, but most times, you know, they just let me want. They let me tell them what to do. Mm. So okay. I must be kind of. Um exciting because you know since the industry you know the industry is just starting to really grow Mm -hmm. that as a as a as a person who has experience in it you can kind of this is like a great time for you to almost define what the industry is going what what other music composers are going to eventually use you as an example going forward. That's got to be incredible. Mm -hmm. 
it is, you know, and I think about it. And one of the th- and that's why one of the things I try to do is I'm trying to let um define the sound of of um of Nollywood. I'm trying to mm-hmm. um, redefine it, you know, and so I'm trying to put as many um elements local try to, so one of the things i try to do is to try to make or add even though we used um, orchestral elements i try to put traditional instruments as much as possible because i want the sound to be uniquely nigerian right you know i mean when i leave you today tomorrow i'm i'm, I'm writing music for a film mm. and i'm looking for or I found I'm actually going to meet with them tomorrow. Mm. Um, lo- some local musicians they play. It's called Ogene in Igbo language, mm. but it is it's a cowbell. So mm. they make they they make music from a cowbell. You know? mm. They have several cowbells, you know, with different tones, mm. you know, and they hit it. And then they have other instruments they play with it. It's a kind of music. It's found in Eastern Nigeria, mm. and I want to use it for this score. You know, I want to use, especially the cowbell, I want to use it as, I want it to be the sound or to create the motif that will keep um, uh, resurfacing in the film. You know, yeah. so one of the things with what you said, one of the things I'm trying to help composers do is that we need to define our own sound. We need yeah. to, and we need to make it our, you know, with our instruments, with our, even though, Film music is a bit, it's a bit, um, there's a lot of copying, you know, you want mm-hmm. to yep. <laughs> sound right. this, sound this. I, I'm, I'm trying as much as possible to incorporate our own elements right. you know, into it to make it uniquely Nigerian. Right. So it's, yeah, it's a, I think about what you said, I think about it a lot, you know, and I want to be, if I can, <laughs> be the right inspiration. <laughs> to everybody coming mm. well, it's so like you, um, when um, when Miami Vice was on TV right mm-hmm. Yeah, like no one had done soundtracks the way they did they, I mean it was just never, never done before and Jan Hammer um, he like you, you knew the minute like I, if you turned your back to the TV and one of his scenes came on, you could instantly go, John Hot Hammer, and no, it's like a Miami a background. He just he made you think of Miami when his music was on the screen. And that to me is like the true art of uh imposure will but not impose your will because it's kind of like you can't music composer once told a show that the composer should have enough awareness to be able to not be there on the screen but be there you know exactly yes and you don't want to yeah you don't want to so you want to you want to write music such that you get people to feel it, not to hear it. Right, mm-hmm. right. So, so you are telling the story, and then they are feeling something about the character. You right. Know? But when they start to hear it, then maybe you've done it a bit too much. Right. It could be loud. It could be soft music. But your aim is that more or less they should feel it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they should follow the character. But they should feel your music. Right. <laughs> That's right. how. Yeah. So, absolutely, he's absolutely right. Mm-hmm. right. So, you are listening to Twelve Million. And today's guest is film composer and sound designer Kulan Iku, joining us from Nigeria. Um, so, you know, as you mentioned, um, Nollywood is one of the largest, particularly emerging um, movie scenes. I think it's second largest as far as output mm. behind um, Bollywood. Oh, uh, Bollywood. Um, so where do you see the, the industry going? Um, I know we talked a little bit about kind of your role in helping <clears throat> define that, but where do you see the industry shift going? 
so um i'm happy because not only, um netflix is investing a lot mm. and especially in the last three years um netflix is investing in a lot they've come in they're investing in in originals and they want they've started investing in their first um, series yep. you know so all of this investment one what it does is it helps uh first of all the standard to improve um because everybody working on this project have to meet a certain standard the mm. netflix standard and so it helps to generally just lift even though we have a lot of output you know the quality of the films have been here and there you know just right. once in a while one of them is top notch so uh, i believe that with um, netflix coming to invest and i hope other um multinationals come and invest in the film industry because it's the film industry in nigeria is the s- second or third largest employer of labor mm. you know, so he has a he has a very big role to play you know even in the country mm. Right. You know, listing of people the poverty and all of that so i hope more people come and invest in nollywood but i i with what netflix is doing and with what people are realizing that you can make a film and then it would ring a bell internationally mm-hmm. you know, with what netflix have, have done I, I believe that people are going to be investing more and more in in nollywood and i i see very rapid development in the next five years it's going mm. to develop rapidly mm. you know and this there's, there's going to be room for everybody to be able to um, to be able to create you know and get heard and get listened to and people watching your stuff you know so um i'm positive about it you know i'm positive that it would it would improve uh, mm. it would get there especially with multinationals investing so mm. <laughs> this is yeah What's the um, what's the film community like there? Like, um, like are you guys? I mean, is there are a lot of networking amongst you, or is there places for you guys to commune and gather? Or like, how how like you found a lot of your jobs and, and connections through school? Is that mm-hmm. kind of how it generally happens? Or mm, so for me, that's how it happened. Yeah. But, um, and generally, I always tell people, film making is really you need to build relationships, you know, because yeah. it, it's a collective art. It's a lot of people working together, and a director would always want to work with somebody he knows how to communicate best with, or who knows how to interpret what he's trying to communicate best. Mm-hmm. You know, and if a director finds that one person, many times they just try to want to go to that person or same people but um i i don't think that you know because a lot of it is independent i don't think that um we have done enough to build communities you know which is a you've just put an idea in my head you know to try and create a i, I actually have a small community of composers you know I tried mm. to to speak to them. We have a, a WhatsApp group. You know, I talk to them about contracts. I talk mm. to them about what should be in their contracts, what they should demand for, you know, because um, one of the things people don't understand is, or the composers I've met, they don't understand the business side right. of things, you know. So I have that small WhatsApp group, but I think we need a bigger... <laughs> kind of i mean there are unions there's the actors guild there's the producers guild right. but right. they kind of are not um they're not working they're not mm. really functional like that so the biggest a- actors and the biggest producers are not in those guilds right so it's kind of like a very small project you know that those guilds work for uh, you know but like you said the community is supposed to be able to help you know on a whole right. and i think it's something we need to work on we need to build you know to 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 
get a stronger industry. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think yeah. you're right. Because yeah. I think the, it's very important when you're growing an industry to uh, like like a fledgling industry that the grassroots level of that industry needs to be very engaged and strong. It, it helps to kind of churn up interest and also helps to develop other skill sets um, right. people within that industry because otherwise you end up becoming like this top heavy um industry where where you know what i mean so um yeah top heavy where just a few people at the top know right. how to do the best mm -hmm. yes so i think it's kind of like that now mm -hmm. you know but we, if we have that community people are going to more people are going to be involved because i keep like i said before i keep saying it in the next five years mm. there's going I, I believe that there's going to be more work and more people will be needed Absolutely. You know, i can't i can't do all right. the films you know, you can do all the films you know. right. so the more people uh, you know get involved right. the merrier it is the stronger an mm. industry we have i mean you Aren't might be able to open a school exactly yes mm -hmm. yes Yes. Yeah. We then, like you say, teaches, films. but teaches the business as well, right? Because at the end of the day, it is the film right. business, right? So, business, yes, <laughs> yeah, the film business too. Yeah, we need mm -hmm. we need better film schools. You know, so hmm, mm -hmm. right. might have to do something about that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, the interest is here because I right. just within the last, I'd say four months, I've had at least four meetings with different individuals all here in the States mm -hmm. trying to do, trying to find like some connections or some kind of working relationships to Nollywood. They oh, are, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I have a friend who has a film festival here, the Nollywood film festival. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, here, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it only that, that, that's only impactful if you can not only bring films from Nigeria here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but build those people, build the knowledge base and the community there. Because at that point, you don't have to look for anything anymore. It's it's mm -hmm. it's just producing. It's just right. doing it's just stuff. Producing. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it would be... It would be great to connect with any of them, you know, and any way I can help, you know. I'm always I will put you in touch with people, trust me. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, any way I can help, I'm willing yeah. to, I'm open to. So um, people who want to, I mean, I'm willing to help, right. you know. So depending on what they need, um, I can connect them to, because I pretty much know the major players in the industry. You know? mm -hmm. So I'm, I, are, I'm I know one dude and you know who i'm talking about who mm -hmm. like has been that was me and him we we're talking about this last year he was like oh we gotta get involved i'm like okay well mm -hmm. let's do it figure it's, it out yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you should get involved definitely <laughs> you should get involved so as as we we mentioned um, previously, the the name of our show is called Twelve Million, which is inspired by a book from authored by Richard Wright, talking about Richard Wright's book Twelve Million Black Voices. Um, so one of the things that we do with all of our guests is we ask them, is there a, a particular book that inspired you um, that you would like to? Um, recommend to our listeners or, or to, to us as well because we, yeah. <laughs> we are always looking for good good reading okay a book um, um so uh, let me give a bit of a no. <laughs> why I say book let me let me say so when i was leaving secondary school one of the things that I wanted to do was to change the financial situation in my mm. home, mm. you know. And so 
at that point, I was reading a lot of business books and um, that kind of thing. So I know it's, it's very, how, how do I put it? But one of the books that really, it, it just came out at that point. It was actually reached that poor dad. As, mm. I don't know if you've, you've read that book. I know so many people have, you know. Mm-mm. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I think mm. I've re- I must have re- read this book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, mo- that book made such a difference mm. at that point in my life. Yeah. You know, because then I started to understand, you know, assets and liabilities. And, and with the culture we have, you know, where rich people just try to show off. Mm. I started to understand, no, you need to build assets and you need to, you know, so that, that as, as a kid, that when, when the book came out, it inspired me a lot, you know, growing up, Mm -hmm. but then, um, I'd like to recommend Chimamanda Adichie. Mm. She lives, she's, she's Nigerian, but I think she lives in New York. Um, Mm. And she writes really, really well. Mm. Very mm. good stories. She writes a story about the Biafra War. It's mm. called Half of the Yellow Sun. Oh, yeah. I've heard this mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need to read. She has another book, Africana. You know, she's a really, really good writer. I think <laughs> um, the way she writes about it is, is, is quite inspiring. And especially if you think about um, what happened during the war mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the healing process that I think this country needs, you know, mm. from that war is, is something that we as a country have not really talked about, you know, but I mean, two million people were killed in that war, you know. Mm. So it's. Um, it's, her writing is really good and it's something that really inspires me. You know, so, Chimamanda Adichie, Half of the Yellow Sun, I think. Yes, Half of the Yellow Sun. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, this was a book I was like, this was on my list of books to make my way through.